AI is one of the most important things humanity is working on. It's more profound than, I don't know, electricity or fire. That's Sundar Pichai. What's interesting about this quote is I could say the same thing, and it would be like a prediction. Sundar can say it, and because he thinks it, it will be real. Because he has the world's most powerful corporation at his disposal. And so if he genuinely believes that AI is more important or as important as electricity or fire, he will make AI as important as electricity or fire. Because he has all the resources in the world, the talented engineers, the data sets. AI is built on data. Google has nothing but tons of data. So this is a really important moment where Google is transitioning, making all of its products based on AI. Because it means the world will come along with it. The one thing, I, whenever I see this quote, it makes me stop. If it's one of the most important things humanity is working on and is more profound than electricity or fire, what the hell are the other things? that are more important than the thing that is more important than electricity or fire. Anyway, let's see what Google has done with this stuff. Here's something they rolled out uh, two weeks ago. Hey, how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we need to for like upper like five people. For few, four people, you can come. So the voice on the left, the one you can totally understand, was AI generated. It's a machine, and the voice on the right is a real one. And it shows how far we've come, right? Because I remember a few years ago, you couldn't even talk to Dragon Speak and have it understand. And then we reached the point where you could talk to Alexa or Siri, and it would understand what you were saying, or Cortana. Cortana. Now we've reached the point where Google, now this is within a relatively small domain and it's reasonably scripted, but that was a real call to a real restaurant. Reporters are still trying to figure out exactly what restaurant in Palo Alto they called, but no one has found it quite yet. Um, but that is amazing. Like that we can go from where we were in voice capabilities and understanding context and semantic analysis and get to that point. That is crazy. And it's a little bit creepy, right? And all sort of all AI technology kind of goes against the edge and Google you know, for some insane reason, didn't have their robot announce that it was a robot, which led to a lot of criticism. But it is incredible technology. And so one of the things I think about is what are some of the questions with this technology? And sometimes I worry. I worry that the United States isn't doing enough. You know, there are companies that are doing enough. There are companies that are thinking through all the complexities of artificial intelligence. But is our government? And that was something that was worrying me. But I recently just had a 45 minute, maybe an hour long conversation with the president about questions like that, about whether an AI system has real military value, whether you can use an AI system to actually kill somebody, whether you can trust a computer to make that decision, whether AI will concentrate power too much in certain companies, what the role of the government is in opening up data sets, whether there are certain cultural values that need to be embedded in the data sets, whether there should be rules about transparency. It was a really interesting conversation. I was impressed every step of the conversation with the president and the way he thought through all these things. It was illuminating. But it wasn't the president of the United States, it was the president of France. It was Macron. You know, France has a national AI policy. Britain is now developing a national AI policy. China has said that one of their most important things is to have AI dominance, whatever the heck that means. I don't know whether it's in research products, military tech, or whatever. Have AI dominance by 2030. And it's one of the most important things to the government. The United States kind of let it slide. We had a meeting at the White House last week. Good, good first step, but we've backslid a lot. And it's one of the things I worry about. You know, we have this technology that's coming, profoundly important. As you can tell, just from that Sundar call, this technology is going to change all kinds of things. We, you know, maybe it won't change as much as the optimists say. Maybe it won't be more important than fire, but it's going to be really important. And our government needs to be thinking about it. And so, what do you do in a world like that? What does your company do? What do you do when you have AI coming at you, when you have the blockchain coming at you, and quantum computing coming at you, and all these profound changes? You've got to learn to adapt. You know, in journalism, we talk about Every time there's a new platform that comes up, the trick is to understand the rules of the platform and to be wired on that platform, right? To understand how YouTube works and to be wired on that platform. To understand how LinkedIn works and be like LinkedIn. To somehow get the essence of the new thing that is built and transform yourself to that. And so as things move faster and faster, that becomes harder and harder, but it's something we have to do. So adaption and resilience are the key. <laughs>